Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Hope you're having a uh, good start to your Tuesday. I'm at my favorite place in the mornings here at home. I love to come down here and sit by my fire and, and read. And today I'm thinking about um, how uh, God has revealed himself to us and how he has brought salvation to us. He has done so much to... Uh, to do things uh, that those that would truly believe, those that would have faith enough to become like a child and see things. Um, and he's hidden these things from the wise and the prudent of the world, the scripture says. And when, you, when you think about salvation by way of a cross, of course, to the world, that makes absolutely no sense. The scripture even says it's foolishness uh, to the world. But to us, it's the most beautiful sight um, that we can imagine. It's uh, I, I remember one one man teaching that it's almost you know in the day the cross was a sign of execution, a sign of judgment, uh, and it's almost like us taking an electric chair and putting it up on a steeple of a church, and uh, it makes no sense to a world that does not uh, see God as a loving God who has given us a savior. Uh, in Matthew eleven twenty five, the scripture says, God has hid these things from the wise and prudent, and he's revealed them unto babes. And I'm so glad that he has. Um, you see, a lot of times the wisdom of the world is foolishness um, and vice versa. The wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. God is so wise that even the highest IQ, the smartest person in the world, they, they can't figure God out. And... But if we were able to come to God by our intellect, if, if it was that the smartest people of the world would have things figured out in, in the ways of God, it wouldn't be very, very fair because uh, they would have a head start on the rest of us, on people like me. And they would leave us left standing out in the shadows to figure things out for ourselves. And that's not how God is. That means that our spirituality would be based upon intellect. And even within the church, there are people that pursue knowledge. And even the pursuit of knowledge within itself can be a false god. It can be uh, something that's unfulfilling. Uh, god says that we should seek wisdom and godly wisdom. And that all begins in humility. And that's, I'm going to be talking about some of those things in the next few days. Humility is very important. And I'm not speaking of false humility. And I'm not speaking of, uh, of, of negative thoughts towards yourself. Uh, godly humility. We'll talk about that in the next few days. But today... The scripture that I want to read to you is found in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 27. It says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound or put to shame the things that which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. And things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You see, God has uh, brought himself to us by way of Jesus. And Jesus stripped down his glory to become one of us, God Emmanuel, God with us. It's not that God is so high. Adrian Rogers said this years ago. Uh, I, love, I love this quote. It said, and he said, it's not that God is so high that few can figure him out. It is that God has placed himself at such a low level that few of us will ever get down low enough to see God and, and how he has revealed himself to us. Uh, friends, let's humble ourselves and see God as a Lord of our life and remember that he has chosen the base things of the world to reveal this to us. And... Uh, we shouldn't glory in anything but the cross of Jesus. Meditate on the cross today, and thank you for uh, sharing this few minutes with me this morning. God bless.